great to have our guest back in our studio this morning. He's here to talk about a movie that is going to be in theaters on April 13th. It is a story of a gentleman by, the, gentleman by the name of Father Stuart Long, and it's called Father Stu. We're happy to have Mark Wahlberg here with yeah. us. Hey, How are you guys? Hey, Mark. I feel like I just broke the fourth wall. I watched her do the <laughs> traffic. <laughs> wow, that you was classic. Saw it. And I knew she was going to mention the Schuylkill. <laughs> Schuylkill first day. Schuylkill. Well, you, you're an honorary Philadelphian. I mean, oh, yeah. you, 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 let's, let's face it. take a lot of pride in that, too. Yes, yeah. I, I remember when, when the, uh, the Eagles were... Uh, Heading to the Super Bowl, yep. we you you came on with us, man, yeah. and uh, you know we we never forgot that. And of course, you're Vince Papani, so that's. Uh, I actually, uh, it was it was the only time I could stomach the Patriots losing. I know. <laughs> Very diplomatic. The, about it was to that. my Eagles, yeah. And we believe you when you said it, so that meant yeah. a lot. No, so, that's true. Yeah. It was true. It was an honor to put that uniform on. Uh, so, Mark, the uh, the story of Father Stewart is uh, it's pretty wild, man. It's uh, and I'm I'm curious before we go down. Uh, the the storyline of people may not be familiar with the life of, <clears throat> of Father Stu. How did this story get to you? Oh gosh, it sounds like one of those jokes. I'm at a rest. I'm an Italian restaurant in Beverly Hills with two priests, <laughs> <laughs> and literally on a Saturday afternoon, one of them starts pitching me a movie. And he told me the story once. I wasn't really paying attention. He started telling me again, and then it just dawned on me. Oh my gosh, this is something that I should do. I'm always looking for the next great challenge, right. and, and more importantly, this is also an opportunity for me to do something that really kind of represents my faith, and mm -hmm. and hopefully will will uh, will will help a lot of people. And people are really touched by the film. There's a lot to be gleaned from this movie, uh, and I, I I'm I'm a sucker for this kind of story. This the fact that it's real only makes it that much more impactful. But um, there's redemption. There's a, a false start to redemption that is uh, that is driven home by a, a more a cataclysmic event that occurs to to uh, with Father Stu. But also uh, all the things like forgive. I think forgiveness and things that we lose sight of. I was talking to Casey prior to having you on today about we've forgotten how to you know take people as a whole entity and most importantly seeing the good in people. Seeing the good in people, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. and that point is driven home in the movie. Is that? Yeah. We, we're all imperfections. We're mm -hmm. all, and that, that part of it, but retain the ability to say, this may not be something I'm thrilled about this person, but they did this. They, there's, there's something in there, yeah. and that point's driven home as well. There's something in Father Stu that makes him able to slalom into the right people's spheres who help him along. Yeah, and he's then in turn touched so many people in such a short amount of time uh, during the priesthood. But it's, it's remarkable. I just went to Helena, Montana. We had the premiere there. And to see all the people, to show the film to his family, his friends, parishioners, but also see how many people he touched. Right. It's remarkable. I mean, you really feel his presence there. And uh, now we're getting to share that with the whole world. For those who don't know his story, and I don't want to <clears throat> give away too much of, of yeah. maybe what you want to keep for the uh, people who view the film, what what is his story for those who may not well, know? Well, he, uh, he was a boxer. You know, his parents, uh, he lost a, a younger brother really early on. His parents didn't really have the coping skills to deal with that he was left to his own devices he became a fighter he was angry at the world he uh he then tried to go to hollywood to become an actor fell in love with a girl would do anything to be with her and uh, of course she lured him into church she couldn't be with him if he wasn't baptized and wasn't catholic he was like dump the water on me i'm in yeah yeah <laughs> and then uh, and then he had this t terrible accident had a visit from mother mary and then he went to the fullest extreme and said not only am i going to become a catholic i'm going to become a priest and everybody in his life just thought he was absolutely crazy. He challenged everything about the priesthood in the seminary, got diagnosed with a rare disease, uh, incurable disease, and then as his physicality deteriorated, his spirituality soared, and they still campaigned to have him uh, ordained as a priest, and he touched a lot of people. He seemed to be like leap of faith was his thing because uh, yeah, he try in the beginning, yeah. <laughs> he moves to Los Angeles with nothing, no one that, yeah. you know, checks into a hotel, I'm going to be an actor. Yeah. Well, he found out otherwise. Yeah. And, but, but, you know, and, and yet this, this other thing happens in his life, and yet he takes another leap, and mm -hmm. he seems to be one of these that, that, that just trusted his instincts 100% all the way. Yeah, yeah, it was all about intuition for him. And, you know, it's remarkable because the things that he did in a short amount of time, really, uh, I, I talked to the archbishop who had ordained him, and he was like, I couldn't believe, but he had so much real-life experience and all the things that people were going through and struggling with, he had already experienced. So he knew how to kind of help them cope with that and to see with, with with all the adversity that he faced, he handled it with such grace and dignity. Yeah. And if we're lucky enough to get old, we're all going to face it. Yes. But, you know, it's one of those things where how do you cope with that? You mm. know, after just losing my mom. I lost my mom during the movie. Yeah. And, yeah. And, um, and so it's... Uh, it's remarkable. It gives me a lot of comfort. You there's, know, there's, I'm getting old, losing a lot of people. There's a very powerful scene. I, I won't go into it, but it apparently happened right after um, 
your mom had passed, and it seemed as if, in a way, you were you were you were channeling that emotion in this scene. It's particularly uh, it's in the church, and you're yeah. you're why I'm doing all these things that you want of me, speaking to uh, God, and how am I here? Yeah. And it seemed like I mean uh, uh, we've always you know compliment you're 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 a great actor, and and in that moment though so visceral. And you know you you uh, everyone's uh, I uh, tearing up at that because you do have those moments like wait a second I thought I was doing everything right yeah but that's not what it's about yeah no no when everything's going good life throws your curveball and, yeah. and God is definitely at work here it's uh it's amazing to see how people are being touched by this movie it's coming out now at Easter during the pandemic where everybody's mm -hmm. been struggling right yeah. so people from all walks of life really feel like they identify and relate to Stu in their own personal way yeah and and, and I can as well and uh, so. You know, my father was a deacon. My father passed away eight years ago, and you know, and he wasn't born Catholic, and he right. didn't uh, convert until he met my mother, and and all that stuff. And uh, and so you you talk about you know finding the grace of God through pain and suffering, and so they li had lost their first uh, born child, and uh, you figure something like that could. And I talked to my dad about it. You know, they they could have been like you know like peace out, thank you. But every single time I see you, I. I'm reminded of our, our of our son, but like it actually um, it drew them closer to God, which is like this crazy thing that that yeah. happens, and it happened to fathers too. And so you're in Philadelphia, and you're doing a press tour in Philadelphia, and I wasn't sure <laughs> if you were aware of Father Bill Atkinson. Um, this okay, so his story is very very reminiscent of, of what happened with Father Stu. So uh, Father Atkinson wrote this book called Green Bananas, and Father Atkinson was a teacher at Monsignor Bonner High School, and uh, he uh, was a paraplegic. You know, he was in, in a terrible, like, sledding accident. And so he writes this book called Green Bananas. And essentially, it's like, uh, don't buy green bananas because you're not promised tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, you may you may not even be here to enjoy that yellow banana. And so this guy, I, I, you know, I'm sure as you, you know, go through the, uh, the city today, um, I'm sure maybe this will come up, um, you know, more than uh, one yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's something, and to that point, so I there are two uncles uh, in, in my life. My, my wife's uh, uncles were both priests. 50 years plus they've since passed away to uh, uh father jim and father charlie and and there and father Stu reminded me uh, there's a similar sort of thing there's a there's an i don't know what it is and maybe it's if if grace is brought into your life and and you're, you're you know there's a way they carry themselves and you say oh these you know still oh they don't they, they don't know what they're talking about. it's easy a lot of times to dismiss you can't possibly connect to my to my situation but i remember years ago sitting down with uh with both of them at, at various points and i'm like man they they got it they mm -hmm. got it and they were able to speak comfort to me yeah. at a time when i really needed it and and you you project there's a couple of scenes in the movie like uh you know where, where you're you're dispensing the um the solace to people in trouble and they look at you and they, and you're in this vegetative state father stewart should say and and um and and you always get that well if he can then maybe i can and if this helped him maybe it can help me it's such a powerful message yeah yeah and it's important i mean people are really struggling right now but but having that 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 real life experience is invaluable when you were talking about the, that particular scene i've always i've never studied acting but I've, i have a lot of real life experience right the good the bad and i kind of utilize all of that in portraying these characters that i play and try to do it in the most authentic mm -hmm. way and uh yeah so you know Going through that particular moment at that particular time, but still, you know, Stu and the way he handled it, it, it helped me, and it will continue to help me. And I, you know, I just am much more optimistic about the future and accepting things that you can't change. And yeah, you know, yeah, so. uh, learning that is a yeah. big lesson. Yeah. yeah. Who did you yeah. meet from the real story? I know Father Stu has passed, but anybody uh, from his family? Oh yeah, his dad, uh, his, his siblings, his family, his best friends from the seminary, uh, his childhood friends. He's uh he's got a you know he's a colorful guy. You know, lots <laughs> of lots sure. of really interesting friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um well I knew you were coming in so when watching the film <clears throat> I kind of uh, wanted to look at the practical uh parts of, of movie making as well as taking the story in and one of the things that I love Mark is uh and I'm curious about you as an actor when you're uh in, on the set and you're 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 giving your lines and so on um <clears throat> it's it's not the same as what we see once it's edited and put together. Mm. The music in this film, the way they really added a body to it, I thought. Yeah. Um, and when you watch a completed film, um, or, or, it, does that start to impact you more with the, those added pieces of the puzzle, you know what I mean, than when you were there delivering oh, those lines? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, well, <clears throat> I, I, I'll give you a, a great example. I was making a movie called The Fighter, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to watch every great boxing movie ever made leading up until the start of the film. I happened to be on a plane flying to Boston. I had Rocky on. Yeah. 
watching Rocky, all of a sudden, you know, and every time I watch Rocky, you know what it does to you. All <laughs> yeah. of a sudden, I turned off the volume, and I was, because I was on a call, and I'm still watching, and the movie just completely didn't work. Yeah. yeah. Without the sound and all of the music and, yeah. and the score. And so, yeah, of course. And, and Rosie had done a great job. I mean, I knew when I was reading the script, because all, all this, um, the scenes described the music that would be playing and the artist that she wanted to use. I was like, oh, this is going to be really expensive. This is Rosalind Ross. Rosalind Ross, yeah. First time director. First time director. Wrote director. the script. Mm -hmm. um, and you took a chance. Yeah. Uh, but but I, I think you had, you had a, a good, I was reading an interview with you, and you said, she wrote the words. She knew what she was seeing. What better person to translate that? Yeah, yeah, I've definitely felt like that. Because we were trying to make this movie for a while. David O. Russell and I were trying to get get somebody to write the script, and I couldn't couldn't crack it, you know? And then when she came and said she wanted to um, try it, I said, go ahead. And I kind of told her the story, connected her to the people. And then all of a sudden, she comes back to me with a movie that I wanted to make. So I said, if she could put it on the page, she could put it on the screen. That's sure. wild. Had yeah. you worked with uh, Jackie Weaver before? No, I hadn't. No, she's she plays the mom in Silver Linings Playbook, yeah. which is obviously set here in Philly as well. And I I love her. She's so right. she's so compelling. And um, there's something about her eyes whenever you watch. Like she just emotes so well. <laughs> she's fantastic. And you know, I, I lost my mom during the making of the movie, and to kind of rely on her, she was she was definitely there for me in lots of ways. And if I ever needed to get emotional or anything like that, like there's a scene where I'm coming into the church and they're gonna, I realize that they're actually going to ordain me, and I just look to her, and then of course I just oh, get super oh, emotional, oh, you know. Goodness. Uh, so your father in this film is um, Mel Gibson, and so I, I noticed that your relationship with him in this movie is very, very similar to Daddy's Home 2. <laughs> 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 Where he plays your father in that movie yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, he was going to play my brother. But Mel, Mel obviously, was, uh, was, was Bill Long, Stu's dad, his first choice, second choice, and third choice. I've made a lot of movies about real people and especially sensitive subjects, and I've never had somebody deal with it in, in, in such a nonchalant way the way that Bill has. I mean, he really gets a kick out of it. He doesn't really... He knows that um, that I'm playing Stu, but he's able to kind of detach himself from right. that. And so, like when he sees Mel, he just gets he just starts giggling all the time. <laughs> well, he you know, and and he made the Passion of the Christ uh, and and uh, directed and uh, I assume you were able to pull on his. Yeah, on his yeah yeah. Well, because I this was him. a smaller film than some of the other films you've made. Yeah, and, yeah, and and of course you know taking on the responsibility of financing the movie myself. You know he financed the passion. He kind of did it all. Um, so you know that was uh, that was something I was able to take a play from his book and kind of figure out the best way to get the movie made without any kind of creative interference. Because once you bring on a financier or a studio, right. then everybody's got notes. I mean they're paid to have an opinion, right? And then you kind of get that, you get into the rabbit hole. We didn't want to make a film by committee. We wanted to kind of do our own thing and then find the right partner to distribute it. Sure. You're, you're just tuning in. It's uh, Mark Wahlberg is joining us in studio. Father Stu is going to be on theaters April 13th. You guys shot this in 30 days? 30 days, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's like six years to get it done and 30 it's days. It's always, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you're basically in quicksand for all this time. And yeah. then all of a sudden you have to sprint to the, to the finish line. And then it was the same thing with... We had a lot of time to edit the film, but then we had a short amount of time to release the film. Mm. So, uh, well, well, has, I'm sorry, guys. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm not surprised that you were able to get it done so quickly because you work hard. And you know, there was a, a nice uh, documentary that uh, was done about your life, and you just know that like you're just the dude who uh, <laughs> who is just working from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. Uh, I also know that you take your um, your health and your physical fitness very very seriously. You don't do it because you have to. You do it because you want to and you love it. Yeah. So, gaining 30 pounds in six weeks. Was that fun or did that suck? It mm. was the worst experience of my oh. life. I'm still feeling uh, the repercussions of that. It's just because it's just at my age, it's not that healthy to do. It's and a freaking nightmare. I tried to do it in the most healthy way possible. So when people think, oh, God, you got to gain 30 pounds. <laughs> oh, poor you. Like, you know, you, you, it's not right. like all the things you crave are on the menu. None of those things were things that I got to eat. I didn't. The fun stuff. <laughs> I was eating, you know, a dozen eggs with a dozen pieces of bacon, two, oh, three God. bowls of white rice, drinking olive oil out of a glass. <laughs> And then I'd have a steak. And then, you know, right after that meal, two hours later, you get a knock on the door and you got to eat again. And you got to pound another meal. So from 7,000 calories uh, a day for the first two weeks to then 11,000 calories for the last four weeks, it was terrible. And it was all like sodiums, starches, 
stuff yeah, to get you bloated. Healthy. Yeah, no. not healthy at all. I can't believe you guys do that. Like you know, because we we have a friend, Rob McElhenney, did it for a roll too. It's and always sunny. Yeah. He did it for a laugh. Yeah. He did it for a joke. Laugh, but <laughs> and like, he, he, he joke. said what he said yeah. what, what Mark just said. It was it was a nightmare packing yeah. on that weight. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot easier to lose it because then you're just. I mean, you got to be disciplined, right? Yeah. You got to be able to say no, but to <laughs> pack it in when you're already stuffed. That's just the yeah. worst. Do you know uh, the book or the movie called Diary of a City Priest? It's, it's based on a guy named Father John Mac, uh, McNamee, and it was uh, set here in Philadelphia as well. Uh -huh. it's, it's sort of like what Casey was bringing up. And the, the movie was starring um, David Morse. And uh, d when watching Father Stu, it just it sort of reminded me of these people that find ways to do good for people who really need it, who, mm -hmm. who, who need to find um, some salvation and don't know where else to turn. And, and yeah. so if, if you like um, doing this role with Father Stu, I, I highly recommend Diary of the City Priest. Yeah, i definitely check that out. I'm a big fan of Dave Morris, too. But, um, you know, it's one of those things where Stu, like, he was so effective, especially, like, in his prison ministry. You know, he would, when he would go and talk to the inmates, because he was one of those guys. Yeah. yeah. You know, so he could just tell them how it was. And, and we all know people who have made bad decisions. And, you know, if they feel like nobody cares... Then what are, what are they what are they going to live for? You know we have to we have to remind people that we're not going to give up on them. Nobody's beyond redemption. You see the good in people, and uh, accepting people for who they are. So it's so, so, it's so important. Yeah, yeah that, that's what uh, Christmas yeah. uh, uh, Christmas Carol is my favorite book of all time because of that. You have yeah. someone who is well, everyone's deemed beyond you know help. He this guy's gone, and and he does have redemption. And sometimes you just need someone to extend a hand and say. Okay, we're going to work on yeah. this. And that's what this whole movie is about. I love that he has almost a, a false, not, not a completely false start, Father Stu, to his embracing of, of becoming a priest. But it all becomes clear, as I said before, when he has another step in it, this, this, yeah. this disease that he gets that really, put, okay, where, what does it really come down to? And it seems to me that you in your life have, have gone through, you've hit that point where, uh, where you are all in now did mm -hmm. it did it was was that a a hard process or did you have a kind of a, a a switch flick moment as father Stu had no i mean i've always been you know uh you know ever since a young age when i started refocusing on my faith good things started happening for me i'm right. a guy who's super disciplined and routine and i've got a lot of gratitude i'm like okay if this is working i'm sticking with this i'm not going to veer off of the plan at all and then I realized, of course, you know, all these things are happening for a reason. I'm being put in this position for a reason. The story is coming to me for a reason. And so to be able to then focus on doing the greater good and figuring out what my purpose is and how I utilize all the talents that I have and the position that I'm in to do something great and help people and inspire yeah. people to do more. And that's why I'm hearing now all these great stories. I can imagine if this movie works, I really want to focus on doing a lot more faith-based content, things that will bring people together. Hopefully people will come to me with great stories. Young filmmakers will come with their ideas, and I'll be able to help them make their movies and uh, and get these kind of projects out there. It and helps also, people. And also doing more things just behind the scenes without going and talking about it. You know, because, you know, the left hand's not supposed to know what the right hand's doing. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be doing things um, out of the goodness of our heart, not for a pat on the back. But it is, it's also, you know, it's important to have the conversation, especially in this day and age when there's so much focus and emphasis on negativity and people being so judgmental without really, you know, and we all have our own stuff. We all have our own issues. And it'd be a shame for somebody to go and, and affect somebody else's life knowing they have stuff. I mean, that's... Yeah. That's a bad situation. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the inclination just to dismiss people in in their entirety is it's got to change it's yeah. how i think that's how we all heal when we start to do what you just said yeah uh casey mentioned your work ethic and uh how busy you are do you do you ever take breaks you ever uh, go on a little downtime uh yeah a little bit <laughs> yeah. a little it's golf, bit it it's golf right but like yeah. yeah golf i mean I, I i get that even i get that time every day you know i wake up with my prayer routine and reading scripture and then i kind of work out and then if I'm lucky, you know, I wake the kids up, I'll go play golf in two hours or less. I have that time to myself, and then I kind of work for the rest of the day. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to the summer after I finish a movie in July and go up to, to our lake house in Gaza Ranch and play golf and hang out with the kids. And You're my kind of golfer, by the way. I'm like a, a Sunday morning, crack of dawn, a yeah, little rip. under two hours, I can play yeah. 18 holes. Yeah, Love you got it. too much stuff to do. I mean, Did you do a lot of praying on the course, I assume, right? Uh, <laughs> please, God, go to make this Please, God, go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny because my wife was just uh, giving me an earful. She was like, you know, Brendan, my youngest son now is playing golf too, which is the greatest thing ever. It totally. annoys my wife so much because now she can never say no to me <laughs> right. going to play because both of my sons are playing. <laughs> so, Bonding time. So he's uh he's like, Mom, 
dad even rushes on the golf course. <laughs> she's like, you know, you know how bad that is? You're rushing on the golf course? I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, do you know why I rush on the golf course? She's like, no, why? I said, because you call me every 10 minutes going, where are you? Why are you taking so long? Get home. So I purposely stopped playing in the middle of the day with my friends right. and playing the four-hour golf round. Right. And I started playing first thing, crack of dawn, yep. like a crazy person yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's only for you. Mark, there are certain scenes in certain movies that will just uh, always bring a smile to my face. And um, there's a scene in Ted 2 where you guys are doing uh, the lawn, uh, lawn order theme. And they, uh, they started... Bum, um, bum. Yes. <laughs> and hey, so, you lawyer guy. <laughs> bum, bum. They were advertising Law & Order The Return during the Super Bowl this year pretty heavily, and I could not not hear your voice and Seth MacFarlane's voice every time the, the spot came on. So I just want to thank you publicly for doing that scene. Wow, well, thank you, thank you. Well, uh, I got to put in for the uh, for the stripper name. Uh, uh, run the stripper name. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a, it's yeah. a perennial. Uh, yeah. My wife and I, that's a perennial. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot we could thank you for, but you do have to get going. So we're just going to remind people that Father Stu is in theaters April 13th. It's a great film. And if you get a chance, uh, please go soon. It's great to have you here in person. Thanks for stopping Yeah, likewise. By, it's nice to actually get in, you know, get into yeah. a studio again, yeah. see people one-on-one, face-to-face. Yeah. -face. I mean, this pandemic has been tough yeah. on everybody. So. I hear you, man. Well, yeah. the movie came at the right time. Yeah. 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 Thank you for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Anytime. Absolutely. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. yeah.